Hello everyone and welcome to day five now of our Norway fishing trip. Um, as you seen last night, we fished in some horrendous conditions. Um, the only issue was the fish proper came on um, and it was a fisher chuck. As you seen, we had that one um, when we waited, it was 11 pounds, which took that small cod, which was on the rattle rig. And um, we, we managed to fish it for about another 45 minutes. The wind swung round and it was blowing straight up. And we just made it a fish of the thing, just the way it started to come over the pier we called it at night. And this morning now, um, thank God, most of the storm was blown over um, last night. When we got up this morning, it was still blowing too good. So we we drove down to um, the factory, which we are now, which I'm finally around. Believe it or not, I've got you now behind the skip. Um, because you can't bring your car in here. If you do come across that bit burger, please don't bring your car in here because the owner doesn't like it. He allows you to fish on the corner. If you bring your, your vehicle in here, you, you just remove it out. And there's a little parking spot just behind me. You can park your vehicle. This doesn't make it any comfier because we're all hiding behind skips at the moment trying to get out of the, the wind. Um, good thing is today, um, it is due to die off about four o'clock. So cross fingers this evening, it'll be more comfier fishing. So he means Steve out this morning. Um, Wayne and, and Uncle Phil decided they wanted to have a break, so they are staying uh, in the lodge and hopefully will come down this evening to join us. Um, rigs I'll be using today, um, which we've been using all week. It's been catching most of the fish of all the boys. Obviously, is the old rattle rig. There it is with uh, uh, herring on it. Anchovies we doing quite well as well, but everything with anchovies, a lot of the smaller fish. The herring has definitely um, been doing most of the damage. But yeah, this is quite a long one. I think it's eight foot up and over because uh, the tide is actually pushing it down and like we're dropping it, getting better. But yeah, hopefully, maybe some sort of a better video today. <laughs> I take a bit of time out now being this slack water and the fishing is really slow to talk about um, the Tronix Pro Xenon travel rod like I spoke about when um, doing the packing to come out here this rod is absolutely amazing it's a lifesaver especially for me because I, I travel to different countries fishing uh, I can just put it in my whole luggage and when I get there I've got a beach caster exactly the same if I'm traveling up to Skirvoy or anything up north boat fishing uh, I take travel rods, I don't take a rod tube to keep the cost down and this will simply fit in your whole luggage. If you do get blown off when you're fishing up north, you can just do a bit of shore fishing uh, and you don't have to take a rod tube with you for any beach casters. Um, it comes in six equal pieces, as you can see, which I'll, I'll try to lay it out in here in front of me. Believe it or not, when it goes together, you wouldn't even think it's a six-piece rod. It's tremendous. Um, I used it out here in, uh, in September. And I had cod to 16, 17 pounds in it. And I was also using the feathering for mackerel. And I was catching four, two, two, two pounders, between two and a half pounders at a time. And it angling, no problem. Believe it or not, they've actually caught common skate on this rod uh, in Scotland. It goes together quite lovely. Obviously, you get your bottom piece, then your middle section, like so. And then you've got your third section. Your fourth section. And then finally your last section. And that's it. And you're good to go on your fishing straight away. Um, the length is two, um, 12 foot 8, but um, it, it's rated up to 6 ounces, 170 grams. But I was casting 7 ounces and a whole macro with it, no problem. Lovely bit of kit. Absolute lifesaver, especially when I go back to Wales. The wife doesn't like putting my beach casting rods in there, so I put two of these in the boot and I'm away to go fishing and it keeps her happy. But yeah, I would highly recommend this if you're traveling anywhere. Brilliant bit of kit. Hope Thanks. you know about the, the Xenon travel rod. I think back down, we had a little bite to eat. The tide is starting to, to make it here now, so cross the girl, the decision is up down the flat line. I think it's still there now. Hopefully you now the fish is starting to turn on you. Yeah, the 
better way to it. I don't know what the noise will be like on the mics, but it's blowing absolutely here. You can see the tip blackouts that the beers in. The only issue we got is we may have to pull off camera. Stand the fish, but I've got there because we're fishing up the keep the wind. The only landing stage is where you see the jaw is up to our left. You see, I think it's a cod. The only issue you do have is a jetty. Swim from the pylon. Especially if you come here in the summer for the halibut. So many. That's why you always tend to fish up by the bins. But Jonah said. On its by the bins because they're going to get moved today. Actually, he's felt bigger than what he is. We've just got a massive clump of seaweed. It's a cod about two or three pounds. What we'll do is we'll hand this up now and I'll give you a look at it. Hello, Hello everyone. Um, I've dropped back now into the, the beach umbrella. Um, I was hoping that fish would have been a lot bigger, but he brought in a massive big piece of kelp with it and a rock. Um, but it's a lovely conditioned fish. I'd say two and a half to three pounds. And as you can see, if you look in there, there's the foam popper brackle rig. Yeah, hopefully there's more to come. It's not a bad start. It's been quite slow in the daytime here, um, most of the week. Um, but that's a good sign to see. So cross fingers, now we can get, as we start to lose the light, we can get into some bigger ones because much better conditions to film today. So hopefully we can get a lot for you. But yeah, good start. Hello yeah. everyone, you won't believe it. Um, I was doing something over there. My rod went over. I didn't have time to set the camera up. Um, and I've just pulled in a wolfish. It's down there, I'll show him in the water. But I kid you not, as the wolfish was coming up, a halibut followed fall it up. It must have been 150 pounds. It was massive. It was bigger than me. And it had to go of the wolfish. I'll show you now with the wolfish. I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm so excited. I don't know if you can see the wolfish in the water. We'll try and get him up in a minute. Yeah, but the halibut came up. Honestly, it was absolutely massive and tried to eat it. So things are looking good. We'll get, his, get the wolfish up now to give you a look at it. Thanks. Hello, everyone. I'm still excited and buzzing. Obviously, I was just going to change my bait because I had a couple of little small rattles on it and nothing. But then I wound it in. And obviously, I had this lovely little wolfish on it. My first ever wolfish in Norway after all these years come in. Absolutely buzzing. But the, you would not believe it. As this was coming up to the water, the biggest halibut I have ever seen in my life just come up. I just mouthed the back of it and then slowly went off. The thing was bigger than me, so things are looking up. I'm going to drop a bait in close now to see if it's still hanging around, but I'll keep you going. But yeah, first wolfish. Welcome back, everyone. Believe it or not, this is 30 minutes later than when I caught the, the wolfish on another halibut take. I thought we were going to have a, a break in the weather, but unfortunately, Norway's weather is so unpredictable. Now we've got wind sweeping down the fjord with a sleety rain. And believe it or not, we've still got two hours of light, but I can't see that lasting. I think it'll be dark quicker than we are. But yeah, when you come now, I definitely bring a brolly. I'm cutched up in the brolly out of the elements. You don't want to be standing 
uh, out there all day, especially um, if we're fishing for about 12, 13 hours like we are. It, it's it's just demoralising. Um, so, yeah, definitely bring some sort of a shelter with you. Um, we're going to keep on fishing through in the darkness now, but hopefully um, this will all blow over and we'll have a bit of a break in the weather again. But, yeah, not nice at all again. Yeah, and my rod is bent over. Um, so I'm going to quickly have a look and hopefully it's a nice cod for us. Yeah, the weather has changed so much, it's ridiculous. The only issue I'm, I'm hoping that it's not a lot of small cod here like it was. Yeah, it's a small cod. I think we're gonna get we're gonna have to fight through these small cod now to get into a decent fish. Yeah, it's really a small cod. Yeah, the lights are just going out now. Sorry I got my back to you. But I think we're gonna have to battle through these two to four pounders to get into a nice fish. I shouldn't grumble after the fishing we've had and the weather we've had the first three days but the tides are perfect when we booked if building tides but now the tides are massive and the fish seem to come in here it's a shame we have to keep on fishing the same three marks or four marks between the group we just can't fish the other marks with the wind. <sighs> yeah, the small codlin. No, it's a massive white din. Chicas, Thomas. Nothing I can. Oh, he just fell off. That's a massive white din. He just fell off, Steve. That's about three or four pound weight in. Look at him. Gee, Thomas, I shouldn't have done that. My fault, I tried to lift him up. But yeah, that was a huge weight in. Yes, please, Steve. Thank you. Sorry, everyone. I do apologise then. It was me just being silly, but that was about a four or five pound weight in. I tried to lift it up, but I pulled the hooks out. But that's a right good start. Schoolboy error on my behalf, but I do apologise and see if I can get into some more now. Hello, everyone. Um... Sorry I couldn't film all this, but this proper kicked off here. Um, the only issue is, it's so small fish. I've got to win the, the beach brawly at the moment because it's torrential rain out here. Uh, and I can't, I don't want to get all the mics and all that damaged. But yeah, at the moment, it's manic. You can't even, it's going to be sitting in the bottom, boom, cod on it. But the issue is, like that one, two to three pound. So hopefully we can just keep on fishing through them, fishing through them. The rain dies. And then we can get the actual take and everything and bringing them in on camera. So at the moment, I've got to keep you in there. I do apologise, but first thing there's no way to blow over. It's down the, the field, it looks a bit clearer. So hopefully we'll back. It's been absolutely manic. Sorry I can't take the camera out of the umbrella. But the rain is, is lashing down. And now it's just deep. So I'm going to come in there and bloody drenched. Um, but the fishing has been absolutely amazing. We're having white thin coming through now. Like a plague proportion. As soon as you cast out, you know, the biggest one we've had now is just under four pound, which Steve has had. But yeah, nearly every single cast. So that's a good sign. Hopefully the cod, big cod are in there chasing them. But yeah, it's been great fishing in between the rain. Hopefully the rain will die off in a bit and we can get back out there and, and film the actual take and that. But yeah, cracking fishing at the moment. 